We've defined an elementary step as a process that involves one set of reactants in an energy valley, one set of products in a second energy valley, and a transition state, a single transition state separating the reactants and products. And the transition state is a maximum on the reaction coordinate. So when we plot the free energy of the reactants as they transform into products, we see kind of a roller coaster type shape with an increase in energy going uphill first, followed by a decrease in energy going downhill to the products. And this is the basic shape of any elementary step when we plot reaction coordinate and free energy. The species at the top of the roller coaster, you will, at the energy maximum, is of course higher in energy than both the reactants and products. And it's what we call the transition state or the transition state structure. You may also hear the term activated complex, although this term's getting pretty old school now. If we think about the position of the transition state along the reaction coordinate, the thing we realize is that its structure is intermediate between the structures of the reactants and products. Recall that the reaction coordinate is a measure of the geometry of the reactants as they transform into products. And so the fact that the transition state shows up between the reactants and products along the horizontal or reaction coordinate axis tells us that its structure is between those of the reactants and products. And to represent that between structure, we need to use a couple of rather strange conventions. For example, we use partial bonds. This means using dotted lines to represent a bond that's in the course of breaking or forming that has a partial bond order at the transition state. Partial charges. If charge is coming in or disappearing from an atom in the course of an elementary step, we have to have some way to represent a charge between, say, zero and plus one, or between negative one and zero. We do that using partial charges, and typically the way we do that is using the symbols delta plus for a charge between zero and plus one, and delta minus for a charge between zero and minus one. So partial bonds and partial charges are extremely common in transition states. We often also use in-between bond angles. So you'll see strange geometries in transition states that are intermediate between those of the reactants and products. And one classic example of this is in the SN2 transition state, where the nucleophile is forming a bond to the electrophilic carbon while the leaving group is departing at the same time. In the transition state, the central electrophilic carbon is bonded, quote unquote, at least partially, to five things. And we see in the transition state, as a result of that, trigonal bipyramidal geometry. You would never see this geometry in a ground state or energy valley organic molecule, but you do see in-between geometries like this in transition states on a regular basis. If we want to understand catalysis, appreciating the structure of a transition state is key because the catalyst will engage with the rate determining transition state to stabilize it relative to the uncatalyzed process. For example, a catalyst of the SN2 reaction might have positive, either full or partial positive charge. The interaction between the partial negative charge of the leaving group and the positive charge of the catalyst is a stabilizing effect on this transition state that could accelerate the step. These are the kinds of interactions that we think about when we think about a catalyst engaging with a transition state. Drawing transition states for uncatalyzed elementary steps then is really a prerequisite for understanding catalysis on a mechanistic level. I have a video already that covers this in detail from Chem 2311. The link is here or you can check out my Chem 2311 playlist on YouTube to see more. But I did want to work through one quick example of this beta elimination elementary step here. Now, when drawing a transition state for a given elementary step, keep in mind that we're going to be looking for three things. Partial bonds, so bonds made or broken in the course of the step, and this includes sigma and pi bonds. Partial charges, anywhere we see formal charge changing, we want to pay attention to that and note what the partial charge is in the transition state. And geometry, where is the geometry changing and what will an in-between geometry look like? One of the first things to do when drawing a transition state, if they're not provided, is to go ahead and draw the curved arrows for the elementary step in. In this step, we have a beta elimination going on. Donation of a pair of electrons from the nitrogen 
forms a new carbon-nitrogen pi bond. We see that here. And the carbon-oxygen bond breaks toward oxygen, and this results in the formation of a new non-bonding lone pair on that oxygen. And the negative charge has shifted from nitrogen to oxygen. So drawing the curved arrows actually has already tipped us off to a number of important aspects of this reaction. A C-in bond is formed, and a C-O bond breaks. The negative charge has shifted from nitrogen to oxygen. And one other important thing to notice is that the carbon has changed geometry. It's gone from sp3 hybridized and tetrahedral in the starting material or reactant to sp2 hybridized and trigonal planar in the product. Typically when I'm drawing transition states, I'll start with the bonds and atoms that are unaffected by the step. So here, the four carbon saturated chain is essentially not affected. This carbon at the center is affected, but only its bonds to nitrogen and oxygen are involved, not its bonds to the other carbons, really. Now, the carbon-nitrogen single bond, or sigma bond, is maintained throughout this step. So I'm going to go ahead and draw that in, since it's maintained throughout the step and doesn't change at the transition state. The methoxy fragment, at least if we focus on the OCH3 part, also doesn't really change. The CH3 group is still linked to oxygen throughout the step. However, the carbon-oxygen bond is breaking, and it's a single bond, so I'm going to represent that with a single dotted line. This indicates a bond order between 0 and 1. To indicate a bond order between 1 and 2, like we see in going from a single to a double bond, we use a dotted line along with the solid line like this to indicate that a double bond is coming in. This hydrogen is still linked to the nitrogen, and here we've accounted for partial bonds, and roughly anyway, the geometry. The geometry will still be roughly tetrahedral in this step, although the nitrogen is on its way to a trigonal planar position and the oxygen is headed out this direction as the CO bond breaks. What about partial charges? Well, here I encourage you to be very systematic in how you elaborate charges. The only atoms whose charges are changing in the course of this step are the nitrogen and the oxygen. And we see the nitrogen going from negative one to zero, and the oxygen going from zero to negative one. This means that in the transition state, the nitrogen and oxygen are sharing negative charge. They both have charges that are less than one. This means that at the transition state, the nitrogen is partially negative and the oxygen is partially negative. And that's it. We've done it. This is a complete transition state for this beta elimination elementary step. So again, I would encourage you to check out my video from Chem 2311 on this, Drawing Transition States. And this is another video from Allison Flynn with additional examples of drawing the transition state of a step.